So, uh, Audi Madrigal, you know what? Let's let's do a thing for Audi real quick. Audi Madrigal reached out to me this morning and said, "Hey, what do you think about this uh, Aqua? What's the name of the company? Aqua Clear Water Solutions. Uh, Aqua Clear Water Solutions is is uh, did our water filtration system. I swear I'm not getting paid for this. I just." I just, you know, we're all supporting local business, so that's me supporting local business. And the owner of this firm is an old friend. We used to swim together, ironically. Um, and he reached out to me this morning and said, hey, what do you think about this, 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 and this? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I appreciate that you guys uh, uh, have given positive comments to the other video. I really appreciate that. It motivates us academics who never get any real attention. Uh, you know, the spirit to do more. And so I wanted to talk about these curves. Uh, and apparently I said some things at the end of the video last time that were really helpful and a lot of y'all didn't hear it. So I'll say it up front now. First and foremost, you see that the White House is starting to use numbers similar to what you see in this particular model. So again, I highly encourage you to look at this particular model. Uh, I personally believe that the White House is either using this one or something just like it to predict uh, to predict its little future endeavors, and that's great. The, Mo the White House is clearly using this one across the entire United States, where we're peaking out on April 15th. And so I think one of Audie's comments this morning was, hey, what about Texas? And this graph is going to shift to the left. This is not a flattening of the curve. This is a shifting of the curve. And so now Texas will have its peak in May 2nd, May 3rd. And so we can, we're going to have all sorts of conversations at the end of the month that says, no, we've already peaked. No, we've already peaked. Well, it's possible that in the United States as a whole, we have already peaked. Think New York, San Francisco, Washington State, Oregon, that kind of thing. Uh, but for us, which we have a lot more rural communities, it's going to take a while, which is in our benefit, uh, for that to go back to normal. So the great state of Texas probably won't peak until May. And here in South Texas, we're fairly rural, uh, even though we don't like to admit it. Um, and so, again, if I was on the local school board, and I'm not, uh, but if I was on the local school board, and Lord knows whether or not those guys are actually paying attention to real science, uh, they're, 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 there's no reason why the kids are going back to school. So the, the biggest takeaway that you can take away from your family from this data is even though these decisions haven't been made yet, your kids are probably not going back to school. In terms of academic year, uh, the spring is, you're gonna do the spring at home, we're gonna take the summer off, and then we'll be back in school in September uh, as, you know, so the idea that, you know, birthday parties and all this other stuff, maybe you can squeeze them in before graduation, that's, that's, that's out. If here in Texas specifically, we peak the second, the first week of May, then we're going to go two weeks to the downslope, and there's only like one week left in the school year. Uh, we're not, I, I can't think for a second that we're going to turn around and make the kids go back. And so I, I, I can, I, my biggest fear is that we're going to look at the White House numbers, who's making predictions on the, the United States, noting that this graph shifts off left for April 15th, and instead our problem, particularly here in Texas, is actually peaking much later than that, three weeks after that. And so I think on the good side, on the very positive side, those of us in more rural communities, uh, because this was a national effort, you know, are hunkering down a week or two before everybody else should have hunkered down. And so we're getting the benefit of that curve flattening. The other thing that's really great is if you look at total number of hospital beds available and hospital bed needed, we are way under the need. So it looks like we're gonna meet demand, this purple to purple. So that's great. And in terms of ICU beds and ventilators, man, we're real close. We're really, really close. And so, you know, if you know, we're beating each other up, I think kind of negatively on Facebook to stay home and that kind of thing. Uh, and I think we should be a little nicer about it, but it seems to be working. And so this curve is kind of flattening already. And so if there's any good news that you're looking for, there it is. What you're doing is working. Um, we spent a lot of time on this deaths per day graph last time. And again, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go back to the United States number first. Again, this is shifting off to the left. You can see that this peak is a little higher. First of all, nowhere do we double the deaths per day. 
All right, so it's important that you keep an eye on graphs, what they mean. Uh, if you have an issue with a graph, you don't understand it, or you want me to describe it, throw it onto my Facebook page or something, uh, email it to me, and I'll, I can do a quick little summary of what it means and why it means what it does. And so uh, we've had so far the biggest jump was 266 to 384, which we had already seen. And then we actually had some flattening here, which is a great sign, a great signal that this curve is going to do what we think it's going to do. Um, we're going to peak out here at 2208 per day, 2214 per day, which is a little higher than what we had estimated before. But for the most part, you can see that the curve, let me, let me do it this way. You can see that the curve, let me go to red to make it manageable. You can see that this curve should have otherwise, you know, when we saw it last week, it kind of looked more like this. And then it kind of, it, it was it was higher here, and then it was lower here. And so this is the flattening of the curve here. This peak is, while the total numbers are higher, they would have otherwise been higher, but it also means that we're going to go longer, okay? So this is stretching out longer, so less chance of going to school by May 1st. This peak is otherwise dropping. Uh, so what you're doing, what we're all doing works. Uh, you can kind of see that we have a little S curve here in this little curvature, and then it kind of normalizes again. Well, that's because the model is saying, hey, look, mathematically, we should be over here. And so hopefully, hopefully, best case scenario, this flattening right in here does actually make sense, and we'll have a much lower curve than we expect to to get. But, you know, nobody nobody knows. And so... If you're an optimist, then you're seeing this little shift down here at the bottom has already shifted right a little bit, and we're going to have a much flatter curve than predictive. If you're a pessimist, you're, you know, you're in the wrong place because you're not going to find a lot of pessimism other than, you know, reality, yes, but not the pessimism here. And so a couple of extra, the number's a little bigger, and you can see that here. We're estimating 84,000, and I think the last time we saw this, uh, three, four, five days ago, we were looking at 81, 82,000. So the overall numbers might be bigger, uh, but clearly the curve is working and it's getting flatter. That's more about the ability to accurately, uh, uh, accurately uh, forecast out the real numbers as opposed to the flattening of the curve not working. Um, let me... Let me go to Google real quick and type in COVID graphs. There's a couple of other graphs that are out there. Oh, you know, there's a couple of other graphs that are out there that are not fantastic and they are fantastic. And there's a lot of stuff that, you know, doesn't make sense to everybody. And I get that. Let me find the real popular one. Something like this is real popular. No, 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 no. Okay, so I didn't, uh, I was unable to click on the one I wanted, but this is the one I wanted. It took me a little while to get here, uh, but we found it. So what's happening in the, the, so a couple of things are happening in this particular graph. Number one, this is a logarithmic graph, which means that the y-axis does not increase on standard numbers. Please understand that these numbers are not appropriately comparative to each other. Uh, thank you, Mike. They, uh, they are drawn this way to adjust for population size. And so everybody's looking at this China number and saying, well, we have more cases than China. And again, don't get caught on the actual number. The biggest important thing about this graph is that they'll never go back down. And this is critical. This is, a, this is critical. The, the, you'll see how the China curve has flattened out and gone straight to the right. Because this is a cumulative confirmed cases, not deaths, okay? And so, again, be real careful when you're reading these graphs because they don't all tell the same story and you're just seeing these numbers and these lines go up and this, I saw somebody put out a quadratic curve the other day and I was like, this is not a quadratic equation. And I was just, it's just, you have to stop and go back to the, you know, Remember the first two weeks of stats when you were like, yeah, yeah, whatever, we're talking about graph. This is why it's critically important, okay? So this number, 
this graph with the United States, for example, which is in green, I don't know why it's in green, but let's go to the green, which is in green, is never gonna come back down. Okay, that'll never happen on this graph because it's cumulative. And you have to understand that because if you understand that this is not gonna come back down, then the slope of the upslope of this curve isn't as dramatic as it looks. It's really important to remember what you're looking at. And so if we are expecting in the United States in the next 15 days to go back to normal, then we go out 15 days to like 40. And so this curve should keep growing at something like this. We'll get up here and then obviously I can't draw that, but we'll get to about here on the graph and we will flatten out very similarly to everybody else. So what was the big deal with China? If you look at the China curve, they at some point, again, ignore the actual numbers, but at some point they're like, wow, this is really serious. Boom. This is when they do their shutdown and then they go to the right. And you can see the same thing with some of these other cultures. There comes this one moment where they turn, there comes this Japan very slowly, it's a different culture, but uh, South Korea turns around and implements a nationwide strategy. They turn around and implement a nationwide strategy. Uh, China can literally shut down its country if they want. I think Germany's about to do something really nicely along that curve as well. But the most important thing here to note is that the US numbers will never flatten back out. And so you can, we're just waiting for them to go all the way to the right. Be careful with these curves. They, 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 they tell a beautiful story. They tell a, mathematically, they tell a wonderful tale of comparison between countries, but they are, but, but you've got to be cognizant of that growth pattern. And you can see here how cases double every day, not happening. Every two days, well, that's happening at the beginning. And then you get past the first 10 days. And ostensibly the United States has already passed the first 10 days and this should start to begin to level off a little bit more. So just be careful with these curves, with these graphics, because they tell all sorts of different stories. Um, where is the one that we were working on? Is it this one? Uh, yeah, so again, and to wrap up a second time, what would I do if I were you? I would shift over to your state, Texas, and look at the total demand. And again, notice how it shifts to the right. Our demand peak here isn't going to happen until May, which is, you know, in the first mo in the first video, I was talking about nationwide numbers and here state numbers. Uh, if you're if you're an ISD in the state of Texas, I don't see why you would take the kids back. I, I just don't see why. And so decision making as a parent, pre you know, dedicate a little bit of time and technology, order stuff on Amazon, even if it takes two weeks to arrive, because you will be homeschooling all of April and probably all of May. That's eight weeks. So in our case, we kind of, we did dedicated space. Um, and so the boys are over here and, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you can see that or not. The boys are over here and they have their dedicated stations. Um, we have separated from the rest of the house. And so when you're here, you're working, when you're over there, you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, we're spending money on tech to make sure that everybody's got headsets and microphones and uh, we might buy an extra computer, although I haven't told my wife that. And uh, if you're thinking about summer and rec and, you know, Hector, who's the coach of MSC, you know, you're probably not going to be operational till 1 June. And so if you're out here trying to make decisions, Marisa and her dance studio probably won't be operational till 1 June. If you're a restaurant, you're going to operate the way that you're operating for the next two months. And so I would create... Uh, some infrastructure. And what we're telling our advisors is create infrastructure now because you want to impress upon your clients that you are still professional, that you can manage, that you're going to be here. And we are. We've got, in, in our case, we've got the computer systems and the video and the audio and the headsets. And, you know, we still have access to the market and so on and so forth. Uh, and so we can operate, right? Uh, and that's what I would be doing. I would be ensuring that you have infrastructure in place to take care of clients, family, in reverse order, family, clients, the schools, et cetera. Um, and here in Texas, we're just two weeks behind. And so that's just the way it's going to be. Again, I really appreciate the positive comments. You're welcome to share this. I'll make this one public. Um, and uh, I, hope, I, hope, I hope it helps. If I can help or if you want to just call, just call me on the phone and chat. I'm on the phone all day. Give me a call. I'll talk to you guys soon.